if you're fortunate enough to RV full time, you know there's a lot of things you get to do and see. However, to help keep your RV running smoothly on the road, there's also some maintenance you need to do as well. Like changing this thingamajiggy. Is that the technical term? For me it is. <laughs> Since I keep pronouncing the and node and rod, I'm going to get behind the camera and we're going to let Danny take it from here. Steven Spielberg. <laughs> I'm doing you all a huge favor. Before we get going though, I would like to ask you to please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and please leave us comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. So let's get into this video. What we want to cover today is a little bit of maintenance on your hot water heater. And what we're trying to do is maintain or prolong the life of our water heater. If you're not familiar with them, these water heaters have something called an anode rod in them. And what they are, they're basically a sacrificial lamb. When you're hooked up to water, you have water running through your hot water heater, it has minerals in it. And that causes rust and the, basically the shell of your water heater to, to rust. So what these anode rods are doing, they're sacrificial lamb they rust and corrode before, to help protect the shell of your water heater. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to replace our anode rod. We're also going to use this little hose connector to help flush out any sediments in the bottom of our RV. And we're going to use a 1 and a 16th inch socket to pull our anode rod out. Now before we do any of this out here, there's a couple things we have to do inside the RV. We want to make sure we relieve all the water pressure to our hot water heater. We want to make sure there's no hot water in the hot water heater. And we also want to turn off the electric and the gas to the hot water heater. Once all that is done, then we can come back out here and we'll replace our anode rod. So let's jump inside the RV, make sure everything's turned off, and we'll also relieve the water pressure as well. So before we get started outside, there's a few things we have to do inside. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna check our electric water heaters turned off, also our gas water heaters turned off. As you can see, these are both off. And the last thing we're gonna do in here is to relieve any pressure in our water system. And we can actually turn the hot water heater circuit breaker off if we wanted to. However, there's also a switch in the hot water heater. We can just turn it off out there as well. So these are both turned off. Now we're gonna relieve any pressure in our water system. We'll do that from the kitchen sink. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up both the hot water and the cold water as well. So let's go ahead and do that right now. The last thing we're going to do inside is we want to relieve the water pressure to our system. This is as simple as opening up a, a faucet, a valve. You also want to make sure you're doing hot water and cold water. Now we're mooch docking right now, so I don't even have any water connected to the RV. That's why you don't see anything coming out of here at all. However, if you were hooked up to, or dry camping, you had a water pump on, you want to make sure you turn your water pump off as well. If you're connected to city water, you'd either want to make sure you turn the city water off or completely disconnect it from your RV. So I think we're good in here. So now we can go outside and change out our anode rod. Now that we've shut the power off inside, there's a couple things we have to do on the outside before we pull our anode rod out. We have a suburban hot water heater. We have a power switch right here. If you can see that, we're going to go ahead and turn that off now, just to be safe. We also have a pressure relief valve, and what this does, it's, it's, it's a way to relieve the pressure from your hot water heater. So what we want to do is we want to relieve any pressure before we pull the anode rod out. Now, a word of caution, if you have hot water in here, you have a chance of, you know, scolding hot water hitting you. So make sure you have, there's no more hot water in your hot water heater. You can do this in a couple of ways. You could actually turn your hot water heater off, go inside and run your hot water until it's cold. In our particular case, we don't even have water connected to our RV right now. And it's been setting for about 48 hours. So there's, there's definitely no hot water in here. Another quick tip, in case you run into the same issue that I just ran into, this little cleaning nozzle. We just ordered this. It came in from, I believe it was Amazon. I had a little crack in here, so this whole thing would just slide. It's basically useless. These are very hard to put back on the, the little uh, tip here. So what I did is I took one of those little, basically like a fire lighter or a, a, a lighter. I warmed this up just a little bit, not enough to melt it, just enough to make it a little bit more flexible. Then I was able to push it back on the knob here. So just in case you have the same problem, quick way to fix these. 
Now that we have this off, let's go ahead and we're going to relieve the pressure. Hopefully I don't get too wet. Okay, and like I said, we don't have any water hooked up to this right now. That's why we just had a little bit of water come out of here. Okay, so now that's done, I am going to loosen up the anode rod. I am going to try to catch as much water as possible, just so you can see, or we can, we can all see if we do get any contaminants that come out as well. Now again, this is a one and a sixteenth inch socket, and I have about a six inch extension on this as well. And I am gonna try to catch as much water as I can, and we'll see what we get out of here. Now this does hold 12 gallons. There's no way we're going to collect all 12 gallons, but we'll see what we get out of it. And you can definitely see, we did get some stuff that came out. Hopefully we get some more inside the bucket. While this is finished draining, I wanted to show you the old anode rod and the new anode rod. They say you should replace these annually or if they get to 75% depleted. Now you can see the old one, you can see the new one. It's not 75% depleted, but since we have it out, we're gonna go ahead and change them anyways. But I, just, I did one, this is six months. This is only six months of usage. So I'm glad we did it. We'll probably do ours every six months. I, I would rather change it earlier than later. So we did catch some sediment in our bucket, not a whole lot. And if we get Steven Spielberg to come over here, AKA Dina, <laughs> you can see some of the sediment that came out. Again, it's not a whole lot, but I'm, I'm still glad we did this. Now we're gonna do the next step. We're gonna take our magic wand. We're gonna move it inside of our hot water heater and see if we can drag out any more sediment. And that's what we're gonna do now. Now the next thing we want to do is try to get out as much sediment as we can. We're going to use this wand. We have it hooked up to water. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this wand back and forth around and try to pull out as much sediment as we can and see how much more we can get out. And we did that for about two to three minutes, or you can do it until you don't get any more sediments coming out. We're gonna let this finish draining, then we'll just put our new anode rod in, we'll be good to go. One thing to be aware of, this is a magnesium anode rod. They also make aluminum anode rods. I believe the aluminum lasts a little bit longer, but I just thought magnesium sounded pretty cool, so we got this one. Also, one thing to be aware of, this does have plumber's tape on it. If you do happen to get an anode rod without plumber's tape on it, make sure you put some on it. This will help stop some leaks. So let's go ahead and install it. Now, I always like anything like this. I like to start it with finger tight. That just helps to make sure I'm not cross threading it. Now that we have this started, just tighten it up. Now I got this pretty snug. You don't want to gorilla tighten this. You don't want to break something, but it's very snug. So what we can do now is we can actually turn our water on. Once we start running the hot water heater, we'd come back out to make sure there's no leaks. But again, that's, it's as simple as that. Again, all we did, we made sure the power was turned off. We made sure the water was turned off. We made sure the water pressure was off. We made sure we didn't have any hot water in here unscrewed the anode rod, 
cleaned it out, put a new one in, and we're done. Hopefully that shows you just how easy it is to really help maintain your hot water heater and actually extend the lifespan of your hot water heater. We probably did this, I could have done this in probably two or three minutes. Of course, filming took a little bit longer, but it's a very, very simple job. Again, if your wife has to take a cold shower, she's not gonna be very happy with you. So this is something you probably wanna do once in a while. If you have any comments or any questions, please leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And remember, always live life to the fullest.